when to eat, and also what to eat within 24 hour periods, as well as over a year, not just to maximize your wellness and how you feel and look, but how to maximize your overall longevity. In general, what we're talking about is not making the body always in a state of being fed. The need, I think there needs to be at least during the week, sometimes when the body is lacking food, lacking blood or has low blood sugar. Um, and so there's various types of diets. We used to call it calorie restriction. It was first found 100 years ago that restricting calories in rats makes them live about 30% longer because they're healthier. They don't get cancer and diabetes. Then there's uh, more recently called um, intermittent fasting or time-restricted feeding or protein restriction or the keto diet. These are all variations on a theme, restricting elements about what is a terrible Western diet that we're being fed by a lot of companies. The one that I practice myself is one meal a day. I try at least to put most of my calories into one large meal, which for me is dinner. I really love dinner and that's mostly plants. Uh, but you might like breakfast and, and you want to skip dinner or you might want to have lunch. It's all up to you. And the main thing to know is that when you, you don't have a lot of food through the day, let's say you skip breakfast, you're actually turning on your body's defenses against aging, the same ones that these xenohermines turn on. So I've been skipping breakfast for most of my life. And during the pandemic, I started having a very small lunch, uh, and now I skip lunch. If I'm hungry during the day, I'll nibble on a few nuts or have maybe a spoonful of yogurt. But other than that, I try to power on through chocolate. Serena, you and I talk a lot about chocolate, very high cacao density or percentage, 80% plus is, is a good snack as well, I'm healthy. But ultimately, I really enjoy dinner. I really enjoy eating a plant-based dinner. And my blood work, which I measure fairly routinely, has only improved since I've been on those diets. And there's a lot of science I could cite, and maybe in the notes, Serena, that we put out, we'll put some studies to back this up. But there's so many studies showing that a plant-based diet, mostly plant-based diets, improves health. I mean, I've got one just to you. If you're on a Mediterranean diet, which is mostly plants, a little bit of fish, olive oil is the fat, uh, you actually reduce your mortality rate by 31%. And that there are others. There's, there's one compared to non-vegetarians. You can reduce your chances of death in life by all causes by more than 12%. And so ultimately, I would say that the one that's the most health, the healthiest is vegan and pescatarian. And then from there on, octo, lacto, vegetarians. And then the ones that don't seem to associate with the longest life, the regular Western diet, which we all know is horrible, full of sugar and terrible fats. Um, and also the carnivore diet. I wish carnivore diets were the longest because I love meat, but really the science doesn't back that up, unfortunately. And the reason we think this all works is it's not just the nutrients that we get and the xenohermitans. It's also keeping your blood sugar levels relatively low, amino acid levels not too high, and also puts your body in that state of one and turns on your body's defenses. And all of that's what gives you this 31% reduction in mortality. So here's the thing. You can eat really well. What we're saying, what I could guess what I'm saying is um, don't always feed yourself. You don't need three big meals a day with snacks and meat. Try to eat two meals a day if that's how you feel and substitute liquids with a meal. So I have, I have water, I have tea, I have athletic greens, which has a lot of nutrients in it. I have just that's had water. Fine. That was coming. Mm -hmm. I do have just that water on uh, on every other day. And so I'm, I'm making sure that my body has nutrients, but I'm also filling up on liquids which don't have the calories. And so what I've noticed by measuring my blood glucose level with a patch here, that my liver kicks in after about two weeks if I'm if you try this, you should give it at least two weeks because it takes a while to get used to. And after that two weeks, your liver will start putting out sugar and you won't feel hungry as much. Uh, I don't feel hungry during the day. Very rarely, actually. Only when I'm stressed do I need to eat something. And it's, it's not because I'm hungry. And so you'll find that it is tough in the beginning. So I recommend, we recommend having lots of liquids in, to substitute. My diet, I love my life. I love eating the kinds of foods that I can eat dinner. And I can have a really big dinner. Before, I'd always have to watch what I ate. But now I, I just eat what I want. And I don't feel hungry during the day. Just by fasting, you're going to help your body recover and turn on those defenses against not just aging. It's not just about aging. It's about what happens to you over the next few weeks once you adopt these diets. You'll feel better already and long term, you'll do better. And, you know, anecdotally, I know people that have improved their, their memory by doing the kind of things we're recommending, which is eating really well, clean, mm -hmm. um, and giving yourself all the nutrients that you need, but not excess calories and not excess nutrients as well. Again, more evidence that fasting is good, not just for longevity, but for diseases. So that's one. The next one let's talk about, which a lot of people call intermittent fasting. We'll mm -hmm. just call it fasting. This is a period if you go longer than a day. Some people do three days. Some people go for a week. I wouldn't go longer than that because then you'll start chewing up your muscle, which you don't want to do. But these long extended periods 
doing a real deep cleanse on the body and turning on that autophagy, that process of recycling proteins very deeply, especially once you get beyond the three day mark, when your metabolism switches into what's called chaperone mediated autophagy, the deep cleanse. So that's fasting. But if you eat a piece of toast for breakfast or heaven forbid, a giant glass of orange juice, you'll have this spike in sugar and you'll feel great. But then your body will put out too much insulin and suck that glucose out of your bloodstream and put you into a deficit. And that's hypoglycemia. And then you're hungry. You've got ghrelin coming out into your body and you, you feel hungry and you need to eat something. I'm at a state now where I don't get those rises and crashes. My liver is putting out glucose from when I wake up till dinner. And I've never been so focused. I've never been so brain fog free. Because the, these crashes, what they do is they make you feel shaky, tired and brain fog. And I wish I'd done this in my 20s and done it my whole life because I've really never felt better because of it. Before you get aminos out of meat, you need to digest it. And so the first step is acid in your stomach is going to break down that meat into amino acids. And then your microbiomes can utilize a lot of them. And then those amino acids are also going to leach into your bloodstream. Now, so now you've got these amino acids circling in your body, circulating. And there are three ones that are particularly important to know about. It's leucine, isoleucine, and valine, also known as the branched chain amino acids. And these are used by the body to sense protein intake. And the sensor is this protein complex we talked about called mTOR. And when there's lots of these three branched amino acids, particularly leucine, it'll be activated. And this mTOR, the role is to say, wow, I've got lots of amino acids, let's build muscle, let's repair cells, let's do all good stuff, which is what you feel good if you eat red meat and your microbiome can handle it.